Welcome to another episode of the Fashion Masters podcast. Today we're going to be talking about metabolic syndrome and how fashion decompression can actually benefit this issue. And before we begin, I just want to read just an overview from the Mayo Clinic of what metabolic syndrome is. And it's a cluster of conditions that occur together, increasing your risk of heart disease, stroke, and type 2 diabetes. These conditions include increased blood pressure, high blood sugar, excess body fat around the waist, and abnormal and abnormal cholesterol and triglyceride levels. So there's a lot going on there, but it's there's a theme behind this, clearly. So like always, I'm gonna ask you that initial question. So what are you what is your perspective on metabolic syndrome and how can fascia decompression benefit this issue uh well okay so you know it's funny because right now i've seen on facebook there's a lot of these pictures that will show a scene from a beach from the 70s and people are you know in their bathing suits and everybody is really fit looking and then you see now like a beach in 2020s somewhere and there's a lot of obesity so something's clearly changed from before until now and of course, when we're talking about fascia decompression, we're always relating everything to proper diaphragmatic breathing. So the first time I actually heard of that term was probably seven or eight years ago. I was reading a book called, I believe it was The Truth About Sugar. Mm. And it was a fascinating book, gave me a whole lot of insight into a number of things. And just as a quick side note, because this is really interesting, smoking, like this was fascinating to me because they said way back when, before cigarettes were part of things that you purchase, um, tobacco, when you're smoking it, because it was alkaline, you wouldn't be pulling it into your lungs. So you would pull it in more like a cigar, I would imagine. Mm. Where when they started producing cigarettes, they actually added sugar to the tobacco, which made it acidic, which then allowed people to pull it into their lungs, which actually started creating a lot of the problems that we're seeing with cigarette smoking. So anyways, I just found that really fascinating because I had never heard of the like mm. the fact that sugar was actually the how everything's evolved the problem. Yeah. Yeah. So but that was just a side note because I just I love that learning that. So anyway, so if we think about this diaphragm muscle, which is of course the key component to fascia decompression, is learning how to breathe diaphragmatically because of the literally different physiology that we have when we're conscious breathers compared to when we're upper chest breathers. So we have to imagine what's in this vicinity and the mechanical aspects of what are going on when we're breathing. So on the left side here, we've got the stomach organ and the spleen. On the right side, we have the liver, the gallbladder, and right in the center, we've got the pancreas. So it's actually a cluster of cells in the pancreas called the islets of Langerhans that actually produce the insulin to be excreted when our blood sugar... The islets or islands? Islets. I-S-L-E-T-S. <laughs> islets like of an... Langerhans. I know, it's a funny name. It's, it's, it sounds it's... like an island. It does. Well, I, and they're <laughs> little islands, islands, I guess, yeah, 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 in, yeah, in the pancreas. So this yeah. is really where the hormone insulin is created. So when we eat, our blood sugar rises. If it rises too high, it can create a lot of damage to the body. So the insulin gets secreted. So it creates this balance. And as long as we're in this specific range of blood sugar, that's a good thing. And that's mm -hmm. what this function is supposed to be doing for us. So when we understand what's happening when we're breathing properly, this diaphragm muscle is moving up and down and the pancreas right in the center rests just below the diaphragm. Mm -hmm. So breathing properly is giving energy, giving heat, giving a mechanical continual action to support the energy addition to this area. Now, conversely, if we're breathing through the muscles of the upper chest, as most people do, we fall in. So now this plate of muscle that is supposed to be supporting the rib cage and everything above, as it weakens, we come crashing down into the core of the body, causing all of this displacement. And when we're not using this muscle properly, it's not moving hardly at all. All of the action is coming through the muscles of the upper yeah. chest. So now this mechanical activity that would normally be creating heat and energy to all of the organs, but the pancreas as well, it's now not working. Hmm. So now we have this area that's becoming cold. And like with everything, when it's cold, it doesn't function with ease. Just like again, yeah. we're in Winnipeg here in the winter, try starting the car. If it's been sitting outside and it's minus 30, you can't just go into the car, start it and drive. 
Yeah. You need to heat it up. You need yeah. to go through that process. And sometimes the car won't even start. Mm -hmm. Like you actually need to, you know, jump start the car mm -hmm. because it's so in a deep freeze. Mm -hmm. So this is really what I'm seeing is, is the reason and the problem for all of the problems that we're seeing today is we've come from a place where we've changed how we function in life. You know, even as kids, I mean, when I was a kid, you, you went outside and get home before it's dark kind of scenario. Like mm -hmm. you'd be playing with the kids on your street. There's no phones. There's no right, video games. There's, trees, there's no nothing. Fences. You're, you make your fun. You make your fun. So you're using your body in this way where you're hanging and you're, you're, you're using your body in all of its ability pretty much. As mm -hmm. kids, I mean, I remember I, I didn't take gymnastics, but I would be doing front handsprings you know, back walkovers, cartwheels, like all these things that we do as kids, mm -hmm. you play and you don't even really consider the consequences unless you have some really bad injury and you break something Yeah, typically. So now we're looking at kids who aren't doing that. They might be playing a sport, but that's very organized in how you work your body. So now you get grooves into how you move. And then when you're not doing that, you're probably playing a game in front of that computer. And, and you said it, you, you, you said it perfectly. Like it's just people don't play to play where before like we were playing just because that's all we could really do like what what else is there yeah. to do like you can play and come up with like games and and that's great and all like a physical game or maybe you're you are playing a sport but I even remember because you know me my whole life I was extremely active when I was young I remember this is literally what a day after school would look like. I would run in like the running club yeah. and I always had to be first. Then I'd go straight to hockey after, play hockey for an hour, hour and a half, come home. Then I would go for a bike ride through like all these trails. And then there's even times I'd like skateboard or go for a rollerblade. And it's like, you can't, it's just that you don't see that nearly as much now, no. but and I would just see a whole crew of, of my buddies at like the skate park or in these trails on our bikes by the jumps and whatnot. And, and that's something we would, we would go pretty well every single day after school. Well, and not even to mention now, some of those things that people still do are motorized <laughs> or, you know, mm -hmm. like people are getting motorized bikes. So I've never been on one, but I think it's a combination of actually pedaling, but then, okay, yeah. let's go up the hill and let's turn the motor yeah. on. So yeah. you're not even working it i mean like even even those things where you stand i mean yes it takes balance mm -hmm. but once you've got the balance under like are you actually working your body in mm -hmm. the ways that it would be if you were just on a skateboard and pushing mm -hmm. so yeah so i mean all to say that things have changed dramatically not to mention the stress the all, all of it all of it like there, there's just so much so basically our, well, our and, and nutrition is yeah. a massive thing as well yeah. but it's a mess it's an absolute mess so our systems have become frozen and, and we as a population are breathing through the muscles of the upper chest. And then when you think of the, like your generation, so you're in your, you're almost 30, mm -hmm. you're, you just turned 29. So mm -hmm. you're in the time frame now where if you're going to be having kids, you're probably starting to consider this like now to the next decade. So your generation did grow up in front of technology where mine didn't. So I was, wasn't growing yes. up with yes, this yes, impact. Yes and no. Um, cause like I know, okay, sure. Technology was a thing, but nothing compared to what it is now. No, I would still, but compared I to would, my generation, yeah, there's like, zero, very, very different. Yep. So I think the generation below me is the worst. Well, it's only going to continue. I mean, I'm seeing two year olds where parents are giving totally. two year olds Those the phone, like, oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, all to say again, like things are very different in how we use our bodies all the time. So now the majority of all people, and this is why we're seeing issues with obesity and all these other problems is because they don't have this engine turned on. So they're breathing up through here. So of course, the first thing that's going to happen is we start collapsing into the core. This is going to create that belly fat, but it's not fat. It's an accumulation of toxins in the fat cells from compression, ballooning, lack of movement. We're not digesting or absorbing properly. We're not eliminating correctly. So the waste is getting stuck and stored. We're attracting parasites and other creatures that are living inside of us. They're creating waste, so we're expanding. So there's this massive expansion of the physical body 
because we are literally frozen in this area. Fat, fat's still caught up in the mix, though, correct? Of course it is. Yes, but we're not creating more fat. I mean, I'm talking like, you know, okay, again, from two, that perspective. two times. Um, again, I learned this in exercise physiology when I was in university years ago, but I learned there that only two times in our life do we increase the number of fat cells, babies and puberty. Otherwise, as we get older, like as, you know, basically... 40 plus, right? Like that's the, the time when you're like, okay, things are changing. And that was my generation. It's probably a lot earlier now because mm -hmm. things have changed mm -hmm. <laughs> since my generation. So it's, it's kind of fun to watch these changes happening through the generations and to see the patterning of the bodies change as a result of it. So now we have this weak muscle, all the weight of everything above is crashing down into this core space. So now these organs these poor organs that normally, mm -hmm. you know, were supported properly and had an engine giving them um, that heat to do their jobs, that's gone. So, I mean, no wonder we're going through stress. And it's fascinating mm -hmm. because I just saw a video two days ago and I wish I could find it, but it was one of those videos in another um, thing I was watching and I couldn't retrieve it again because I was listening and it was, it, it so is in line with how I see what's going on in the body. They said that what they thought they knew about diabetes is different. Hmm. They believed that, of course, before, let's say we have a normal size body, the insulin, and, and we're eating like, you know, in the range that makes sense for our body. Yeah. The pancreas, when it's healthy, will keep that balance of blood sugar by creating enough insulin based on what we're eating. So if we happen to eat like a really carbohydrate high, you know, meal in that moment, it will produce more and so on and so on to keep everything balanced. But then if we're overeating, there comes a point when that organ can't create enough. So that's when, you know, what you're eating, how much are you eating come into play with regards to type two diabetes, because if we're eating more than the insulin can manage, mm -hmm. then the blood sugar stays high and then it starts creating problems. And then eventually you might need to take injections or pills or whatever it is to yeah. help assist that process mm -hmm. and it was believed for that reason now i believe that too because that makes sense there's even gestational diabetes when women are pregnant now you're feeding more and then you can end up going into a, a diabetic reaction that way but they have found now that on the surface of the pancreas there's like a slimy sticky coating mm. of fats that are holding everything into the pancreas so that the insulin can't be secreted. Mm. And when I heard this, it was just one of those aha moments because I totally see that because one of the things about fat is like butter at room temperature compared to heated. If it's a solid, it's a solid. If it's heated, it becomes a liquid and, and liquids are mobilizing. So if we've got all of this sticky stuff in our body coating the pancreas and if it's coating the pancreas it's coating everything i mean it's not just there it's not yeah. going to go oh, i'm just going to coat you here it's going to be coating all of the yeah organs. it doesn't have this intelligence to no. attack the pancreas <laughs> <laughs> no but that's the thing like and and that's what i've always felt we're so much stickier and dirtier than what we would have been because a we're dealing with 144 probably more now thousand toxins in the world compared to the 50s which i learned couple of years ago doing yep. a podcast. Yep. So either way, I mean, our environment right now is so dirty. And if we don't have the ability to move those toxins out of the body through that proper breath, they continue to accumulate. And the reality is, is people just aren't exhaling. Mm. You know, even people that are starting to understand now how significant it is to shift your breath to the diaphragm, if you're starting from this place of collapse, now you are literally held in this and you might make some improvement based on where you're starting from. But to be able to open up this phenomenal opportunity to detoxify as well as feed, that's a whole different um, approach. And that's what fascia decompression does. And, and from just a complete physical understanding of this, you can even like right now I'm on a cleanse and it's, it's, very tough. I'm on the last day right now. It's a nine day medical medium cleanse. And I'm surprised my brain's functioning enough to communicate <laughs> right now because it's taken a lot out of me. But there's a difference between a collapsed physique, collapsed posture, a diaphragm that's not working properly, and then doing this cleanse compared to someone who has proper posture alignment, understands the breath, the diaphragm, 
um, breathing properly, how to exhale fully, all of these things. Sure, let's throw in fascia decompression. And then you're doing the cleanse. Your, your body literally just has open roadways to take the nutrients that you're pulling in, which may forcefully tell your body to lift certain toxins, pathogens, viral load, um, heavy metals up into the bloodstream so that you can effectively get rid of it. And however you get rid of that, if it's through waste, if it's through your exhalation, whatever the, the case is, that y- the, the ability for you to detoxify is going to be significantly more powerful. I just feel like this is a very simple way of looking at it and for people to understand compared to being compressed. But now you don't have to do a cleanse to necessarily be healthy. So now just take the idea of, okay, I am in more so that proper posture and alignment. I do understand my breath. The organs are getting fed properly. They're heated. They're working optimally. Then yeah, the food you take in, it's going to pull the nutrients to the cell, do its job, help take that waste, remove it from the body. But now imagine that you're compressed. You're not breathing properly. You're literally cold. Then it's going to be a lot more challenging. So I think that alone is just a very simple way of looking at it and how beneficial the breath, posture, fascia decompression really is. Well, especially too, when you look at how people approach the dysfunctions. So if I have type two diabetes and I'm taking insulin in whatever form I'm taking it, now my body isn't having to work as hard, Mm. kind of like a CPAP machine. If I'm not breathing properly when I'm sleeping and I put a CPAP machine, now this machine is doing the breathing for me. So anytime... It's kind of like the the saying you told me a long time ago, uh, walk with a cane, develop a limp. Mm. But you're doing this almost with the organ. Yes. Yeah, is, is that exactly. kind yeah, of similar? Yeah, you're, you're, you're creating a need to not have to work as hard or right. for your body to not have to do its job properly. Yeah. So understanding, I mean, and, and that's where like, and again, like, the the understanding of what causes diabetes makes sense to me but so does this film and i think it's a combination of it all right Mm -hmm. it's yes if we are eating far more than the organ can manage that's going to be problematic but also if there's a sticky film covering it so the insulin can't even if it's getting created can't leave the organ Mm -hmm. that's also a problem Mm -hmm. so so how do you how do you get rid of that film how do you Obviously, there's not like scientific proof that, A, that's 100% the truth and we yeah. know 100% this. But just from your understanding of the body and let's say, okay, yes, there is a film around the pancreas. How would you address that? So I think of it kind of like candle wax. How do you make candle wax change from the candle to nothing? You heat it. You burn it, right? So it's it's the heating because, again, it's fat. It's 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 dirty fat is really what this film is. So I could see like the breath as in the diaphragm creating a lot of heat for it, but I still feel there needs to be like the tool, like the block to really get in there and kind of like twist it and untangle it and help lift it up so that the fats can then be mobilized. Absolutely. And listening to the video, now I didn't actually get to the end because it was really long and I wanted to get back to the other subject at hand that I was listening to, but they were saying one easy hack for this is to drink a cup of warm water before going to sleep and then they mentioned if you add this other component in but i didn't get to the end of the video because it was very long so again it's all about the heating but that's the point like they're saying like you know heating which is also why i think ice cream is probably the worst food we can eat a lot of people argue that not only is it fat it's frozen fat so now you're putting and it's dairy yeah so you're putting all this frozen fat into your body and you're cooling it down what i'm not like i don't drink anything cold i mean like everything is always like room temperature or or warm it's it's literally frozen fats (laughs) sugar and dairy and the body has a quite difficult time to digest and break down lactose so it's just like it's just the worst and i love it like the taste of it and i when i was bodybuilding i would eat a tub of ben and jerry's every night (laughs) And that probably, there, there's many, there's many reasons why I'm still detoxifying from my, from my past, but okay, carry on. Um, oh yes. Okay. So that was just that extra hack. So again, they're saying basically like we got to heat up this area, but simply putting warm fluid into the stomach organ isn't going to change the game of this frozen 
sticky area that we're dealing with. So yes, when we add pressure in an area over time and we combine it with the diaphragm, then we're heating from the outside and the inside. Mm -hmm. And we become very effective at melting through the adhesions that are locking and holding this sticky fatty substance in place and we start to mobilize it. So that's really the thing. And because of course we're, we're dealing with this area when we actually work the block through the lower ribs, which we always do in our initial classes anyways, because we want to release this diaphragm so it can function more fully. It, it's a very direct approach to creating a release and a shift. So right away, after you even just do the belly and the lower rib positions, you feel like you can lift up a little higher. That rib cage can, can lift and then you can take those deeper exhales to start heating that up. And then it's really lovely. In fact, somebody yesterday was asking me, you know, how do you, do you ever get to a point where you don't have to just, you know, sort of chase the pain or chase the issues? And it was neat because, you know, this is a discussion on tissue temperature in general. So again, if it's minus 30 outside, each time you go outside and you have to start the car, you're going to be dealing with that. But then it, spring starts to come in and it gets a little warmer and maybe it's only minus 10. So maybe you only have to start the car for three minutes before it's ready. And then before you know it, it's summer, you walk out and you start the car. So the more efficient we get with the breath and we use that muscle as our breathing apparatus mm -hmm. consciously, then we continue to create an overall increase in temperature in the body. And the more the body is its correct 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit from core to surface from head to toe, the more efficient we are in general at feeding and cleaning the cells. If though we are colder in general, then we become sluggish and then it's more like minus 10 to minus 30 in the body and then we'll never be efficient. So that's the cool part about this process. We do become more efficient because if you continue the work and you continue to bring that proper breath into your daily action, which this is how we're born to breathe. So it's the easiest thing to do once we teach our bodies how to do it again, because we've literally forgotten how. So if I'm watching this or listening to this and I currently have diabetes and a lot of this is kind of making sense at least. And yeah. like, A, I just want to clarify, like we're not saying, we're not medical professionals that are saying do this, like whatever you decide to do, if you have diabetes, I would definitely recommend communicating with your doctor and figure out that process, correct? But on the flip side, um, we're not saying not to do what your doctor has prescribed you to do. Add this, right? add this and then see what happens. Because right. as you add this and your body starts becoming more efficient, right. the amount, like if you're taking insulin injections or pills or whatever, the amount over time will start to change and you'll start to feel it. Because, you know, like that's the whole thing. We don't want to take you off of a medication you've been taking because you don't want to put your body into some withdrawal. And of course, if you've been given it, obviously there's a need for it, yeah. but we can wean off things. Yeah. And then that's a good thing because the medications can be very taxing for the liver. Yeah. And then if the liver's clogged, we're just, again, keeping the body in it's that one of the frozen most important states. organs to cleanse. Yeah. Um, okay. So then for those who are just wanting to, let's say they were diagnosed with this metabolic issue, essentially. Um, this is just a really good start for you, for them to also just a little bit of like, it's, it's something that's so easy to do is what I'm trying to get at. And it's something that you can just do at home. It's as simple as you can follow some of our YouTube videos, do the belly position, learn how to breathe properly clean up your diet a little bit. We, we don't talk a ton about nutrition because it's very different person to person and everyone has their opinions. But I think that is a great start or at least just understanding and listening to this information that it's going to maybe ring true to some people because I feel like we have this innate intelligence where we just, we just know like certain things when we, just like you listening to that video where it's saying like, no, maybe it's actually coding around the pancreas and is preventing blow. It's like that rang true to you. That just gave you that aha moment. And hope that's what we're trying to do for people as well. Yeah. Give people that aha moment so that they don't have to be stuck in this cycle where it's difficult to get out of. It's pretty simple to get out of, but it has to start with a making a decision to do it Two, actually engaging the breath 
because once you start doing that, like you and I have referenced the breath book so many times and we are contemplating doing a legit episode just based off of that book. But if you haven't read the breath book before, read it. Yeah. And your, your entire view of your body, self-empowerment, everything changes because you're like, this is something I can literally change now. And especially, so obesity is one of the big risk factors for cardiovascular disease, which is one of the common things we see with metabolic issues. So let's say you're 250 pounds, whatever the weight is, and your doctor says, you need to lose weight. So when you go onto the website, diet and exercise. Okay. But often when we are quite large, we have pain. We have joint pain. Our knees don't function or work. So try going for a walk when you have an arthritic knee. And I mean, movement is key. Anything, right? So now you're expected to not only change your diet, but also add in mobility to an already pained body. And if you're limping because you're like, you know what? I'm going to listen. I want to create change. So I'm going to do what I'm told. So now you start walking around the block, but you're limping. Now you're actually creating more problems in the body yeah. because of those compensations. Yeah. So that's a really shitty pill to have to be given if this is your scenario and yet you want to create change. So what do you do? This is the, this is the cool part because with this work, you can do this lying down. You can do this in bed. Working your diaphragm is a very strenuous exercise if you take it to the level oh. of you know, really working it. And you can do that without moving your limbs, Mm -hmm. simply squeezing that belly small, holding as long as you can before you will feel different. Oh my gosh. And you'll sweat by lying. I mean, I do like when I'm doing these exercises, like I am hot Yeah, and that's what we want. We want to heat up the body, get those things flowing to eventually come to the point where then, okay, you know what? I can go for that walk and I can do these other things. And also just because, um, this is all a precursor to cardiovascular disease. And of course, once your heart gets into the mix, you know, now things are a whole different ball game as well for your health. Understanding how that impacts the heart. So your heart, so your pancreas is right under the heart, or sorry, under the diaphragm. The heart is right above the diaphragm. And then the tube, the aorta, feeding all the body runs right through the diaphragm. So, and I think it's 70% of the population are right-handed. So when we're right-handed, where it doesn't matter, we're all collapsed anyways, but for the right-handed person, we tend to collapse more so into that left side to keep that right side free for action. So now we're taking this tube and we're literally creating a squeezing of it. So now there's less space. So on top of that, there's less space. So now the heart has to work harder to push the blood through, but also because it's colder, now all of the fats are sticking onto the inner lining of the vessels, taking away even more space. So again, it all comes down to the same conversation. If we've got high cholesterol, it's because those fats are cold and sticky and they are settled on the inner linings. Mm -hmm. And now we've got such a narrow little space to push the blood and the oxygen through. So of course, it's going to go to how the areas that we need for survival. It's not going to go to the feet, the hands, people with diabetes, of course, your feet are the first things to go. I mean, you see a lot of people with amputations Mm -hmm. because that blood isn't getting there. Mm -hmm. So like, it's fascinating to talk about because we can go into so many different lines of directions from the perspective of medical and how we look at the body's issues and what typically are we going to be confronted with as we get older. We look at the genetics. Oh, I had a bunch of you know, family members die of cancer or heart disease or strokes or whatever it is, but it really all comes down to the same thing, Mm -hmm. just in a different area. Where are there blockages to flow? And if it's in the neck, it can be a stroke. If it's in the heart, it can be a heart attack. If it's in the limb, it can be an amputation or pain or whatever. And pain again, you know, pain is this beautiful, beautiful signal because we don't feel pain first when we're almost at our end. We feel pain in the beginning when the cell isn't given what it needs. Mm -hmm. So if we pay attention to that little message, oh, you're not giving me everything I need, I hurt. So, okay, I'm not going to be afraid of pain and mask yet. I'm going to say, okay, if my foot is hurting, let's address the foot and let's actually put energy into that space as opposed to avoiding it. Because if we avoid it, it's going to keep growing, not only in sensation, but 
adhesion and dysfunction because we're going to be compensating and that's not a conscious thing we're always we're always compensating around pain like if it hurts for me to rotate properly because i've got a stitch in my side i'm going to rotate less that way and i'm just going to start developing like a a different groove of movement mm -hmm. so to be able to understand that and that we can actually melt those grooves and create whole new patterns of movement in the body as we learn to breathe and melt those adhesions then again we have this opportunity to very simply but with discipline and time take our body in a completely different direction to where we currently are at or where we would typically be going if we let gravity and unconscious living direct our, our future. Yeah. Yeah. There's, there's a few things that just really don't sit well with me where let's say, yes, you are larger than you should be. And they're like, okay, diet and exercise. The idea of saying that angers me so much because that is the most vague statement yeah. you could ever say. It's like, you have to realize exercise is its own world of information and nutrition is its own world of information. And you're very different than me. I'm very different than you. And we're very different than everybody else. Sure. We can s share many similarities, but where do you start? What if, what if you're just not educated in the body in exercise in nutrition, then where do you go? Do you go to a doctor to, to seek this advice? Well, they're not necessarily, and I have a, a ridiculous amount of respect for doctors, but they're not necessarily trained in the idea of nutrition and exercise and giving you these protocols. So then do you go to a personal trainer? Well, what does the personal trainer know? Like, do they help you with your pain? And then similar to nutrition, do you go to a nutritionist? Are they going to like draw your blood? Are they going to actually read your blood and see what kind of issues are going on with your body? What kind of foods work well with you? What ones don't? What ones you should be avoiding? Like there's, it's, it's a big kind of rabbit hole and it's something that everybody has to take on themselves. Yeah. And that's what I find frustrating is because we depend so much on these other professionals where we have to be able to take our own initiative to help ourselves in all of these realms. So your one body is connected to absolutely everything is connected to your mind, how you think, how you feel. And if you want to feel good, think clearly be able to move without pain and enjoy life to its fullest. You have to take initiative of your own health and start doing that research now and go to these proper people that can at least give you a little boost. And then you start taking that on. And then you might notice over time, oh, this didn't work well for me. And then you, you tune things up. That's the whole point. You and I try so many different things. All that we were talking about this last night where we can try this new machine or this new diet or this new G or whatever it is and stick with it for a, a long time. And then be like, ah, do you know what? I feel like I got what I got out of that. And mm -hmm. I'm going to try something new, but there's also so many things you can try and you'd only have so much time in a day yeah, <laughs> to totally. do all these things, but you got to find like what actually works the best for you. What is making the most change and stick with that. And then another issue that I have is when a doctor or anybody really is saying like, okay, there's, there's um, heart disease in your family. This is something that you have to really monitor closely or what, whatever the issues is, or arthritis or this or Alzheimer's don't communicate that from a language of fear. Yeah. Communicate that from a language of understanding and just simple things you can do to prevent that from happening. Because as soon as that's implanted in my head from a fearful way, I'm going to start thinking of it from a fearful way and manifest that to happen. And the placebo effect is literally going to work not in my favor for that to happen. So the idea is to really just, okay, sure. Tell me, tell me the news. Okay. I get it, but we can still break those hereditary issues that have been passed down through generations well and what floors me and i mean so a number of years ago there were a few very famous actresses that were told that they had the whatever that breast cancer gene was and then they go and they didn't have breast cancer but they went and they had their they had a double mastectomy they had their breasts removed healthy breast tissue like and now they they have scars now i mean like 
that to me is okay. And that's what, just what you're saying. Like you're, you're told you're likely going to get this because you have this over here. And it's like, to me, that just doesn't, that's not how the body completely works. Completely reacting out of fear. Completely. And not to say that it won't be something that you get down the road, but I mean, any, any one of us can end up getting it, but there's also different ways to approach how to treat that. So anyway, that's a whole different conversation. Yeah. But yes, you're, you're exactly right. Like there, there's so much, I, I can see why so many people are confused, especially if they have a body that's riddled with issues and they're actually doing what they're told to do and they're not getting the results or they're told to do something that they actually can't do because they don't have the range of motion in their body to be able to even move. So that's where this is so awesome because you can start here and simply starting creates change and it's simple to do. You can do it lying down. You can be in bed doing it. And that's the beauty. And also, as you start to tap into those cells that are deeper than what you're consciously aware of, you start to hear what your cells are saying to you. It's a language. It's kind of like Greek. You know, if you've never been taught Greek and you're confronted with something in Greek, you don't know what it's saying. But if you've learned Greek, then you can read the page and you know what the message is. Mm -hmm. The cells have a language and we are intimately tied to our cells. We've just been pulled so far away from it. Yeah. And from our body. Yeah. It's unbelievable. And then the cool thing is, is the more connected you are to your body, you'll know. It took me a long time. It took me years before I really recognized meat is not my friend. And then finally, it was probably 10 years ago or whenever it was, I don't even remember. But I had in one month, four different times I had meat, which I never ate a lot of. But suddenly I did and I got backed up and I'm like, oh my gosh. And then I just recognized, yeah, this isn't working for me. So I, I've stopped eating meat for years now. And for me, that just didn't work. For other people, it might be dairy. For other people, it might be sugar or whatever. We've got different body types that also metabolize foods differently. So whatever it is for you, but that's the neat part. The more connected you get to your body, the more your body tells you. And then there's a suddenly a light bulb and it's like, oh, okay, this isn't my friend. Right. And then there's some things that we do anyways that we know aren't our friend and, and we continue to do them anyway because we're addicted or we've got habits around them. But the more also that you clean your body out, the more your body wants to be healthy. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, big time, big time. And your body starts sending you, and you mentioned this already, starts sending you hints that something isn't quite right or quite going on. And the less in tune with your body you are, the less you're really going to understand that as a hint. Yeah. But then there might be a hint six months later or a year later or whatever it is. And it's like, okay, it's a little bit more of a powerful hint. Then another hint, then another hint. And then if you keep ignoring these hints where it could be like, even as simple as like, oh, I have like a bit of neck pain, but now nah, I'll be fine. Okay. It's a little bit better. And you don't do anything about it. Then you're still doing the same things. You're hunched over. You're doing the same activities. You're laying on one side of the couch all the time. Your neck's crank. And then eventually, boom, you get a kink neck. And you're like, how did that happen? Well, there's all these hints. That was That's from a very simple perspective, but that can happen with anything in the body. Well, didn't you have something where you, you thought a bill was something different and you just kind of didn't open them and eventually suddenly your water's off? Oh my God. <laughs> I mean, same scenario, right? That is so funny. <laughs> it's actually like borderline embarrassing because... <laughs> It's my first time like living in, this was a, over, a, over two years ago, but it was, it was my first time living in an actual house before because like, sure, I lived with my parents growing up, then moved into the apartment for five years and moved yeah. into a house. And then I'm like, okay, got my hydro and whatever all <laughs> set up. But then I didn't know there was like this whole water and waste thing that was going on. So I'm like, oh, it's still hydro. So I'm just like, okay, like you get so much mail still. And I'm like, just send this to me in an email or something like send yeah. the paper. Anyways, it got to a point where like Th those hints weren't catching up for you. Some, something <laughs> was like severely <laughs> off with me. So like, Hey, I can take hints with my physical body pretty well, but clearly when it comes to a home, like, <laughs> nope. Um, but anyways, that, that was, that was a crazy experience and I couldn't believe it. But there was also on my defense, a lot of that mail was going to uh, my old address 
Okay, well, wait, that doesn't make, that doesn't make sense actually. No, no. Okay, now I'm getting pulled into yeah, this. Yeah, don't worry. It was it was an embarrassing. What was funny? No, but that's the point. Like you, you were given <laughs> you were given hints, right? Like okay, pay your bill, pay your bill, pay your bill, and eventually yeah. it's like no, you're shut off, and that's what happens in the body. Yeah. You know, here's a pain, here's a pain, here's a pain. Oh, you know what? You've ignored it for so long. Now your pancreas is no longer working, and now you have to take insulin. Yeah. So yeah, same scenario. Yeah. It's we, we need to really respect the language of the cells. We need to respect and not fear when we're in pain because it's not a scary thing if we understand the reason yeah. for it and we have a process to handle it a hundred percent so i think really the premise here is people need to start really understanding the idea of taking initiative of your own health well like and that. also to understand that you i mean you know i think so many people are frustrated because they've they've put the time they've put the money they've put the effort into doing things without getting the result. I mean, right. I that is sure so five true, times actually. a day I get somebody sending me an email saying, "Will this really work?" Like I'm so deflated because I've been told all these other things would work and it hasn't worked for me yet. So you know, like you, you're, you're scared to hope because when your hopes are crushed all the time, it's scary to bring it back in because it's like, okay, am I going to be disappointed again and again and again? But the cool thing about this is that when you turn on your body's innate wisdom and you drive it like it was designed to drive, we are phenomenal. Mm -hmm. Like we, we don't even understand the capacity of the potential mm -hmm. that we have as humans, I agree not even close. Yep. And so starting there, it doesn't cost anything to start breathing, mm -hmm. to start lying on a towel. We've got so many free videos out there just showing people that fascia decompression component. Simply get started. And even if you have 1% increase in energy tomorrow, that's a great thing. Mm -hmm. Because a year from now, think how much more you're going to be yeah. um, working yeah. properly in your body. And another thing is there's so many different opinions out there on a singular thing. For example, like an apple. Is an apple good for you or is it bad for you? Is it a, a phenomenal cleansing agent to the liver and a nootropic or is it just full of sugar and it's bad for your pancreas and it's whatever so you hear this with like every food similar with like eggs eggs are like a superfood they right. do this and this but no it actually can cause um, um cholesterol. Cl cholesterol uh high cholesterol oh it can feed viruses oh it can do this it can do that and i get confused at times too so i just try to keep my diet fairly simple, but I, I also understand that it's, it's not people's faults because like we're sure we're consuming this information, but we need to consume information to have a starting point and then to help accelerate our body to the next level. But like, we're all confused. Yeah, we, we really are. And like you and I get confused at times too. Now we've gone through the ringer enough where we understand, okay, this is good for my body. This is a big no, no. Um, we try to eat organic, hard to get organic even nowadays, especially meat and stuff like that. It's, it's ridiculous, but, um, that's another big factor is it's just confusing. And something that's not confusing is starting to just access the breath. We all know how important oxygen is, what the brain dies in five minutes without oxygen or something. Yeah. Like it's ridiculous. So we know the crucial component of oxygen and that's the number one essential nutrient that we require. But what I loved about that breath book too, because um, even some people are saying like, you know, over breathing is bad for you, which absolutely it can be if you're not breathing properly. Right. And that's where, you know, the breath book again brings that light of the carbon dioxide balance to the oxygen and exchange why it's so important for the exhalation to be that first or, or that major focus with the breath. It's not just breathe nice and big in and then exhale because that's the problem. People aren't that's breathing exactly properly. It. And by properly, what he was saying is people are over breathing because they're not actually exhaling fully. Yeah. This carbon dioxide gets caught up and this garbage gets caught up in the lungs, but we need to be able to exhale fully and then allow the oxygen to come in. Come in. Like they, he said, the perfect breath is five and a half seconds in five and a half seconds out. And what I love too is because... In and out through the nose, by the way. Yes, yes, exactly. And also the alignment of the tongue supports the, nos or the, the mm -hmm. nose breathing, which Big again, time. we share all the time as well. So um, also though, 
to awaken the cells through the process of the decompression that we share through melting those adhesions. Because if I have calves that are super solid and frozen and I have very little ability to get blood in there, those cells really aren't working. You know, if, if you're walking with the foot properly, again, 26 bones that make up the feet, think about how the, the potential that we have to use these feet in such an articulated kind of way compared to if you're walking like it's a club. You know, you're not activating your toes. You're just yeah. kind of, you know, stepping on these things, thinking that it's like a solid structure. That's a very, very different amount of energy used from one to the other. We want to use all the energy because when the cells are working, they create like a car. Turn a car on, there's exhaust. The exhaust is the carbon dioxide. The exhaust is necessary to allow the oxygen to release from the hemoglobin to go into the cell. So even if we're really focused on the full exhalation from the perspective of what we have available in our diaphragm right now, and we're sending blood or blood filled with oxygen, if we don't have those cells working, they're not going to take that oxygen mm -hmm. because they're dormant. So we need to awaken the cells. And that's yeah. what this whole process is about. Yeah. And that's why it's so fun to simply start because we're, we're turning the body's heat back on. And by heating the body overall in general, the combination of pressure over time throughout combined with turning on the breath, you are melting those adhesions, bringing back those cells into the equation to work for you as opposed to being some dormant bag that you got to slug around. Right. So we become light and buoyant and each step of the way there's gifts mm -hmm. that come with it and understanding of what your body really needs. Yeah. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. Well, I think that was a really great conversation. Yeah, it was fun. Very fun. All of these, all these episodes are a ton of fun. Anything else that you want to share on this subject? No, I think that's, I think that's a lot of information and just for, for people that feel hopeless, um, get that out of your mind because this is a game changer yeah. for your health and how quickly it, it doesn't cost for anything you. to learn how to breathe. You right. can try all of her stuff for free on YouTube and, and you, you want, can't, you, you won't hurt yourself by, by understanding how to breathe differently. hundred percent. And yeah. there's only a benefit there's to it only benefit. in every possible scenario that like every possible scenario, yeah. there's a benefit to breathing properly, understanding how to access the diaphragm. And then you can, take the breathing patterns and this and that to the next level as you start taking these baby steps. Yeah. So awesome. Okay. Um, again, YouTube is a great place to find some of our free videos. We show you how to use a rolled up towel to decompress your fascia and how to access your breath. Um, we have our sampler program, nine bucks for nine videos. Uh, so if you just want to give it a little bit more of a tester, then that's a great place to go. We have the link uh, below in the description if you're watching and listening to this on YouTube. Uh, and then again, for people who are just a little lost or confused and want some guidance and support, our block therapy com community group on Facebook is a great place to go. Um, free to join, just request access, type in Facebook block therapy community, and then just request access and you'll be in. And other than that, thank you very much for tuning in. That was a lot of fun. It sure was. And we'll see you on next week's episode. Bye, everyone.